Hey everybody, I'm C. Andrew Nelson, founder of Aquatacy. I am sicker than a dog right now. And this is Aquatacy's Question of the Week. Have you ever healed a fish of an illness? If you're in this hobby of fish keeping for any length of time, you're gonna eventually come across a fish that's sick. Or a fish that's injured. Mama, the Abunas beat me up! <laughs> or a fish that's sick due to an injury. Are they supposed to be swimming like that? You know, you can take care of fish the very best way that you know how, and still stuff happens. Sometimes we acquire fish that are already sick before we get them. Or sometimes it's a fish that becomes sick in our care. Or sometimes a fish gets hurt while it's in your tank, or gets picked on by other fish, and then develops another illness on top of that. And in some cases, the fish doesn't survive. But what I want to know is, have you ever successfully healed a fish of an illness or an injury? What sort of illness was it? <coughs> I've got malaria. It's okay. I'll be all right. What did you do to treat it? And do you still have that fish today? I have personally had my fair share of sick fish over the years. I have bought fish that were sick and I didn't know it at the time that I bought them. And I didn't always have a quarantine tank. Please, I'm begging you, get a quarantine tank. I started in this hobby when I was about, what, 12, 13 or so, and I've had a lot of different fish, and I've had a lot of different fish diseases come through my tanks. Fin and tail rot, dropsy, ammonia poisoning, the dreaded ick. And of course, sadly, there's so much misinformation about all these conditions and many more out there because that's kind of how the business is. It can be extremely frustrating. It truly can. Because you go out, you find these beautiful fish that you want to put into your beautiful tank, and all of a sudden, boom, you've got an illness that's spreading out throughout the whole tank. <laughs> or you've got a fish that was beautiful when you got them, and not so beautiful now because the illness has ravaged them. I had to learn the hard way when it came down to having a quarantine tank. Depending on where you buy your fish, it's like playing Russian roulette every time you bring a new fish home. And some diseases can spread through a tank like wildfire. But I am happy to report that I have healed quite a few different illnesses when it comes down to the fish. As I've said many times, my grandfather's the one who taught me about this hobby to begin with. He's the one who got me hooked on fish. You know, when I started out in this hobby, I didn't even have a local fish store. We just had local pet shops, and they did not have a lot of medication on their shelves. They also didn't know a lot about fish. Okay, wait a minute. So, let me see. Um, they're the ones with the fins, right? <laughs> So turning to them for advice was not always the best answer. But somehow my grandfather and I managed to gain enough information that we could help some of the fish that were sick. The first thing I learned was salt is our friend. Of course, nowadays my doctor tells me salt is not my friend, but hey. Ick is the one that I've probably had to deal with the most, and it's also the one that I've had the most success in healing. And you know, you'd think by now, with all the advances in the hobby, that ick wouldn't be that big a problem anymore. Sadly, I think ick is just as big a problem, if not a bigger problem, than it used to be. I cannot tell you how many times I go into the big chain pet store and see tanks and tanks and tanks full of fish with ick. You know, oftentimes the problem with getting healthy fish at a big chain pet store is that if they do get ick in their system, it goes through every single tank. They're all linked together. And yeah, I admit it, some of the chain pet stores near me, the employees there don't particularly like me. Well, I come in and I point out that the fish are sick. Um, I hate to tell you, but I think the fish in those tanks have ick. Yeah, thank you. We know. We know. We know. We know. We know. To give you an idea of how common ick still is, I did a whole video a few years ago on how to treat ick. It's called That Icky Feeling. That video has become my number one video. It's got over 50,000 views on it right now. That tells me there are a lot of people who are still having to treat ick. Get a quarantine tank. Then again, sometimes when fish get sick, it's because of our own negligence. Okay, confession time here. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned because I have messed up a water change. Several months ago, I bought some glass catfish. I love glass catfish. I have been fascinated with them since I was a little kid. I got a trio of them at my local fish store and they were perfectly healthy. I had them in my 10 gallon quarantine tank while I was getting their permanent home ready for them. I was doing a water change on the tank one day and I got a little distracted. I forgot to put in my water conditioner. You know, the stuff that's supposed to take care of the chlorine and the chloramines in your tap water, which is just part of your tap water. And it's also good for detoxifying ammonia, nitrites, and nitrates, which is not supposed to be part of your tap water. 
But in my case, it was, and I didn't know it. So I've got my bucket and my hose, and I'm filling the tank back up with water, and I look into the tank, and I see that the three catfish are laying on their sides on the bottom of the tank. That's not a good sign. So I did what any longtime seasoned fish keeper would do. I panicked. I looked on the corner of my desk and there was the water conditioner sitting there and I knew that I hadn't put any of it into the bucket. So I quick put some in the bucket there and I put some in the tank as well. And I'm looking at the fish and I'm just praying, oh, please, please, please don't die on me. Once the water conditioner got into the tank, they started to look a little better. Not great, but they started to look a little better. Meanwhile, I did a test on my tap water and guess what? Ammonia and nitrites through the roof. Normally, I test my tap water on a regular basis, but... For some reason, I hadn't done it recently. The ammonia level was so high on the tap water that actually caused some burns on the fish's skin. And glass catfish are very sensitive fish to begin with. They are like the proverbial canary in a coal mine. If you got them in your tank, you're going to know if there's a problem with your water condition because they will tell you because they will get sick like that. Unfortunately, I lost two of the glass cats, but I managed to save the third one. He was pretty tore up, though. He had white blotches on his body and his little whiskers were all curled up weird, but he managed to make it through with a full recovery. I switched to using RO water or distilled water that I bought from the store in jugs and put that in my tank instead for the water changes. The sad thing is I should have known better. I should have been testing my tap water on a more regular, more consistent basis. And I had just gone through helping a friend with her goldfish that had also gotten ammonia poisoning. My close friends had a goldfish and the wife of the family there, she had the goldfish at her office in a small tank. Now, she had gone away for a bit. She was away from work and had someone else taking care of the fish. But when she got back to work, she found the fish was in bad shape. The fins were all a mess. The whole fish was just falling apart. And this was a very beloved fish. I remember they called me and she was very upset about this and she asked me, what can I do? What's going on? Tell me what's happening with my fish. Fortunately, over the phone, I was actually able to tell them exactly what was going on. From what I suspect, the person that was taking care of her fish at work was actually overfeeding the fish. And all that extra food in the water was turning into ammonia. And that ammonia was burning poor little fish. My suggestion to her was to bring the fish home and set it up in a tank that was much larger than the small tank she had at work. Keep the water clean and clear and well filtered. And to use some kind of product like Nova Aqua Plus to help the fish's sores heal. Kind of like the fishy equivalent of Neosporin. Well, she did all that, was very careful how she took care of the fish, and the fish's fins started to grow back, its scales went back into place, and the fish healed. She took amazing care of this fish. I mean, this fish was in pretty bad shape. She rescued it from death's door. I mean, its body was all crooked, and its tail was bent, and its was, fins were... Ugh. She even massaged this fish to work on that tail that was all bent and everything. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's the spot, that's the spot, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, it was still kind of crunk. It was just a messed up fish still, but it became a healthy fish. Bent, but healthy. She saved that fish's life and it continued to live on for quite a while. Okay, I've answered the question, so what about you? Leave a comment down below and let me know if you've ever healed a fish from an illness or an injury, how you did it and what kind of fish it was, and do you still have that fish? And if you like what you're seeing here on this channel, I hope you'll consider subscribing. And for more great Aquatacy content, head on over to the Aquatacy Patreon page. Aquatacy's YouTube videos are always free to watch, but even pledging a dollar will help us produce more interesting and elaborate content. Check it out at patreon.com slash Aquatacy. The voice is just about to go. <coughs> Thank you so much for watching, and thank you for answering Aquatacy's Question of the Week. New Aquatacy videos on Thursdays, and Aquatacy's Question of the Week on Sundays. And until next time, blessings to you. Oh, gosh.